الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم السلام ورحمة الله so you can go ahead and open up okay بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد so this is the, the second uh, lecture that we're able to uh, put together, inshallah ta'ala, rasulullah and yanfa'bi. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless uh, the brother for putting it together, brother Abdul Mu'min, and bless all those who are listening. And bless it to be upon our scales of hasana yom al So what I wanted to talk about today is the minhaj salafi. I wanted to go through very briefly touch on some of the main points of a book by one of the mashayikh, one of the, the, the uh, esteemed scholars in Saudi Arabia in um, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Umar ibn Salam al-Bazmul, Hafizullah ta'ala, and he is uh, Sheikh a doctor, and he's a doctorate holder, and he is the head of the um, in the in the University of Umm al Qura in Mecca, he is the head of the the college of the faculty of um, of Dawa, the division or faculty this of Quran. This is recorded. So this uh, the Sheikh he wrote a nice concise treatise about the Minhaj al Salafi. And it's called Minhaj al-Salafi al-Ta'rifi, Ta'rifuhu, wa Samatuhu, wa Dawatuhu al-Islahiyya. So Sheikh wrote this treatise, and it is about the way, or the Minhaj al-Salafi, and it is defining it, and talking about its characteristics, and the Dawa to Islahiyya, the Dawa meaning the call to Islam, the propagation of Islam, to that which gives us islah in our lives, which gives us, uh, I guess you might say, peacefulness and calmness and tranquility, as well as helps us in rectification in all of our affairs. So the Sheikh began his treatise. He says, Al-Maqsad al-Awwal. He says, Ta'rif min hajr salafi wa usuluhu so the Sheikh began his treaties by saying, by defining what it means, Minhaj al-Salafi, and what the usul of Salafi, Salafiyya is, and also the ruling for following Salafiyya, or following the Salaf, and the benefits of following Salafiyya. So, the Sheikh said, he said, Al-Minhaj huwa sabil wa tariq al-wadih. He said, Minhaj, the, the word Minhaj, what it means is it means like the path or the way, uh, the clear path or way. And what is meant here is that al-tariq wa khat al-marsum. You know, it's a, it's a path or a line, like you could say a, a clearly drawn out line. And Salafiyya, as far as a term, uh, an Islamic term, or as far as in the Arabic language, uh, it is a nisba il salaf. It is associating one with the Salaf. And the Salaf is everyone who preceded you from your, your fathers, your forefathers, or your near of kin. They make up who your Salaf is. But Salaf, as far as what we're accustomed to using it, as an Islamic term, it is usually used in referring to the pious pre predecessors. And so the Sheikh, he defines the term that we're used to uh, associating with Salafiyya. He says, Al-Murad huna ma kana alayhi rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ashabahu rahimahullah wa radiyallahu anhum wa man tabahum bi asan. So he said, what's meant here by Salafiyya, or the Salaf, 
is what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was upon, and what his companions was, were upon, and those who follow them until the day of judgment. So that's incredibly important. When we talk about the Salaf in general, we're talking about the companions and the Tabi'een, you know, their followers or those who met the companions and and were met the companions as Muslims and died as Muslims, and the Itba'a Tabi'een, those who follow, who met the compa uh, met the Tabi'een and lived in their time and took knowledge from them and who were Muslim as well. That's what we usually mean by the Salaf. But also when we say Salafiyah or, or Salafiyun, this is in reference to those who follow the way of the Sahaba, you know, the way of Quran was Sunnah, and the understanding of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and those who follow them, the successive generations, all the way up until now, or until the Day of Judgment, it will continue after us. There will always be someone following the correct minhaj, or the correct way, you know, by following the Quran and the Sunnah, by the understanding of the Sahaba. There will always continue to be someone following that path. And that shows that it's not a new group, as some people say. A lot of times you hear the people, they uh, speak bad about Salafi, or they have a misunderstanding of Salafi. They say, oh, so-and-so, he's one of those Salafis, meaning that he's a part of a new group. And this is, this is their misunderstanding. This is an, a, uh, a mistake that many people make by not understanding what it means uh, what the Salaf refers to and what Salafiyah means, okay? And the proof that this is not a new group and that and that uh, there will always be a group that will be aided, that will be on righteousness and that will be calling the Kitab wa Sunnah is the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said, مَا تَزَلْ طَيْفَةٌ مِنْ أُمَّتِي ظَاهِرِينَ لَلْحَقِّ حَتِّ يَأْتِيهُمْ أَمَرَ اللَّهُمْ عَلَى ذَلَكِ And that's just one of the uh, narrations, uh, which it has different ruwai, it has different narrations for the same hadith, which basically means that there will always, there will not cease to be a party, a victorious group, uh, that will follow my sunnah, you know, Allah Tazal Taibatim and Ummati. That are, a part, that are in my community. There won't cease to be a, a group from amongst my followers that will continue to be uh, on the, the straight path until the Day of Judgment. Okay, That means there will always be clearly upon the truth. There will always be a party upon the truth until the Day of Judgment. So this is in reference to uh, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah uh, the Salafiyun, those who follow Kitab al Sunnah and the understanding of the Sahaba. So the Sheikh then goes on to say, the Minhaj al Salafi Hua. He says the the path of Salafiya or the Minhaj of Salafi is <laughs> So the Minhaj of Salafi, it is the Tariq Alati Yasul Biha Tahkik al Mutab, the Makana Alayhi Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Habi. He said, the Minhaj is Salafi, it is the way or the path which you only come into its full reality or its full meaning by following the Prophet Wasallam and what his companions were upon. And I think that's pretty clear. Most of the people have a clear idea about that, bi'idnillah. Then the Shaykh goes on to say, O huwa seer ala tariqati sahaba, so he said that also, or you could say, or that it is the following or going along the path. Goodbye. It is Conference going. recording cannot begin at this time. Are you, are you still there? I've been working. No. Okay. So it said that conference. It said something with the conference. Where I don't know if there's any problems. But anyway, I guess if we're still on. There's no problems. Okay. So anyway, it says uh, the sheikh goes on to say that following the path of the Sahaba 
and the way they understand or their following of the Prophet and taking from the Athar, taking from the, this can either refer to the Hadith of the Prophet or the narrations upon the companions and the Tabi'een, that this is also following the Minhaj of Salafi. This is another definition which has the same meaning. When this is a Salaf, a Salafi. So associating oneself with the Salaf, with those first few generations, is known as uh, when someone associates himself, they are considered Salafi. And so the people of knowledge, they've spoken a lot about this in their books, especially uh, in the early books as well as the later books. And some of the names that, are, that refer to Salafia as well are, that are well known are <coughs> names like Ahl Hadith, Ahl Dina Hum, Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, also Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah, uh, Salafiyun, Ahl Hadith, Wa Itba'a Salaf. Itiba'a Salaf. Also, these are other names which refer to uh, uh, refer to Salafiyya. Okay, so those are other names that are known that you'll find in, in the books, in the whole, especially in the classical books, you'll find those names like Ahl Hadith, Wa Ahl Sunnati Wa Jama'a, and and Ahla Athar and things like this are also names that all have the same meaning. They all refer to those following Kitab al-Sunnah wa Fahim al-Salaf or, or the understanding of the Sahaba. Qala Allahu Tabarak wa Ta'ala Wa man yishakaka rasul min ba'di ma tabayyin allahu al-huda wa ya'tabi ghayr al-sabeel al-mu'mineen nawallihi ma tawalla ma nuslihi jahannama so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He says, whoever differs with the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after it has become clear to him the guidance, and that he follows a sabil, or he follows a way other than the believers, then his abode, his ending, is Jahannam. And what an evil abode that is. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes clear that those who differ with the Prophet ﷺ, after it has been made clear to them, the hujjah has been established upon them, the proof has been established upon them. That doesn't mean someone who newly enters into Islam, he doesn't know anything about the sunnah, no one has ever, or even someone who's born Muslim and doesn't know. You know, someone who has ignorance, maybe they have other bijahil, as the ulama, they speak about, those people who have the excuse of ignorance. But this is talking about, this ayah is referring to those who differ with the Prophet Sallallahu You know, they differ with the Sabila Mu'mineen after knowing. They know they have, they've been introduced to the Sunnah, but they refuse the Sunnah and they've chosen to take other paths. And they've divided into sects and groups. So then the Shaykh goes on after that, after mentioning that ayah. He says, with Sabila Mu'mineen, Awul might... ما يستقو على ما كان عليه سحابة رضوان الله عليهم فخروج طريقهم اتباع لغير سبيل المؤمنين. So he says that the way of the believers, uh, uh, of the original believers, and firstly is that it is what the Sahaba were upon. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala be pleased with all of them, and any leaving from this path and way is away from the path of believers. So he's speaking about it in a, in a very knowledge-based way. He didn't speak very harshly, but he said, This is other than the path of the believers. Okay, and that's even the left of the ayat as well. وَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ مُسُنَّةَ الْخُلَفَاءَ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِ So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said in an authentic hadith, he said, Alaykum bi sunnati. He said, upon you, talking about his ummah, upon you is my sunnah, is my way. Wa sunnata khulafa rashidin And following the way of the righteous, uh, the righteous khulafa, you know, the, the four khilafs, uh, khilafa, the khilafa of Umar, uh, khilafa of Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, radiallahu anhum ajma'een. 
So this is the way and the sabil of the mu'minin, and this is the sabil that the Prophet wasallam has mentioned in a hadith. He's mentioned their way and their sunnah by name. So then that, that lets us know the importance of following, of course, the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam and the sunnah of the righteous uh, predecessors, first and foremost being Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, that they, their way and their judgments that conform, of course, with ahadith of the Prophet wasallam. that also makes up the sunnah. That also makes up what is wajib upon the Muslims and the believers to follow. And that also makes up the usul of uh, the usul of uh, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And then the Shaykh goes on to mention uh, many, many ahadith of the Prophet. So we'll just mention some of them for in order to be concise with the time. He said, "An Thoban qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam la tazal taifatun taifatun min ummati al al haq zahirin la yadurum min khadalhum hatta yatihum amr Allah." So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. There won't cease to be a group from amongst my ummah that will be on the haq. And this haq is going to be apparent and they'll be victorious. Bahirin. La yaburuhum. That means nothing will harm them. Even from amongst those people who plan against them or who attack them or slander them. Nothing will harm them. Hatta yatihum amr Allah. Until basically the day of judgment or until they meet Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. So that reassures the believers, those who are trying to follow Kitab wa Sunnah, by the understanding of the Sahaba, and they're practicing that, that they are amongst, inshallah ta'ala, that they'll be amongst the victorious group, and that the victorious group, no matter who attacks them, no matter what group or what sect is criticizing them, whether it be the Rafida, you know, the Shia, those Shia that s- slander Ahl Sunnah, and curse the companions. They do more than slander. For them it is halal to kill Muslims, to kill Ahl Sunnah. For them they believe they receive ajr from this. So it shows you no matter what they plan and how bad they speak about Ahl Sunnah and that they fight and kill Ahl Sunnah like it's going on in, in many places in Iran, it's going on in Yemen, it's going on in many places that you have in Iraq, of course, that they have that they're killing Ahl Sunnah and that they speak bad, you'll meet people who actually curse Abu Bakr, and curse Umar, and curse uh, Uthman, and worship Ali radiallahu anhu. You'll find those people amongst them who consider themselves Muslim, who even curse them. So that hadith of the Prophet wasallam reassures us that this minhaj is protected. It's protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what harm that you go through, that they really can't harm you, and they can definitely not harm the minhaj. Because even if we fail, those who are trying to follow Kitab al-Sunnah will, by the understanding of the, uh, the companions, that even if we fail, or that we drop off the minhaj, that for sure the minhaj is protected. It's protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet wasallam mentioned. So never get discouraged or despair. Just know that that there's a faifa, that there's a group from amongst the, uh, from the ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu that will always be protected and that will always be victorious until the Day of Judgment. Then the Shaykh also mentioned uh, a narration. He said, An Mu'awiyah ibn, ibn Abi Sufyan, أَنَّهُ قَامَ فِينَا فَقَالَ أَلَا إِنَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم قَامَ فِينَا فَقَالَ So Mu'awiyah, uh, رضي الله عنه, he stood up and he said that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he stood up amongst us and he said, "Ala inna min kablikum min ahl al kitab aftaraku ala ithnain wa sirin milla wa inna hadhi milla sataftaraku ala thalath wa sirin sintan wa sabun fi al nar wa wahida fi al jannah wa hi al jamaa." So the Prophet ﷺ in a well-known hadith, and it has many different, uh, uh, many different versions of this hadith, and this is just one of the versions the Shaykh had mentioned, that it was on Muawiyah, and the Prophet ﷺ said that those people from amongst us, from Ahli Kitab, meaning the Jews and the Christians, that they divided into 72 sects, 72 
uh, Milla, you know, even you, you might even refer to as religion. What that this group that the that the Umm of Muhammad sallallahu that they would divide into seventy three sects, and all of them will be in the hellfire except one, except for one that goes in goes to Jannah. And who are they? They are Al Jama'ah, meaning they are Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. Those are those who follow the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and follow his companions' understanding of the religion. Uh, and then the Shaykh goes on to mention some other narrations which basically have the same meaning. So we'll go ahead and go to the next uh, point the Shaykh mentions. He mentions that the Usul of Salafiyyah. So he says the Usul of Salafiyyah, Tukum a Salafiyyah ala Salafa Usul wahiya. So he says that the Minhaj or the way of Salafiyyah, that it has three basic foundations. The first foundation being ikhlas al ibadat lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the first usul or the first foundation is ikhlas, is making all of your worship sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with that, that means understanding. That means with all the understanding of in, in relation to tawheed. You can only make your ibadah that you can be mukhlis, of course, if you understand the meaning of Tawheed. You understand the meaning of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So making your ikhlas, your, your sincerity in all your ibadah. Then the second asl from the usul is lazum al-jama'ah wa sam'i wa ta'ah. He said it is holding to the group. It is the necessitation, necessitation of having a jama'ah, of having the group meaning sticking to the main group, the main body of Muslims, and hearing and obeying the leaders. Of course, this means hearing and obeying the Muslim rulers. So as we go, we'll go more into depth into these usul. And then he says the third asul, that uh, Ahl Sunnati, or Usul al-Salafiyyah, uh, is made up of, it is Hazr min bid'a wal muqtadi'een. So he says that the third asal is that Ahl Sunnah or the Salafiyun or Taifat al Mansura or Ahl Hadith that they they warn against innovation because they know how dangerous innovation it is. It isn't about making yourself big, but when you warn against innovation, it's a fi'l. It's a, 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 a it is an act of ibadah, it's an act of worship. That actually when you warn against innovation in the religion, it's an act of worship. Because the only way we have the religion in its purity today is because Ahl Sunnah min Qablina, those who came before us, they warned against innovation. They were severe against innovation because innovation is changing the religion. That is what happened to the Jews and Christians. Exactly. That is exactly what they broke into groups and sects. They followed their desires. They left the book. They left the books that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. And that's what you see Muslims doing. And that's why it's a from the usul of Ahl Sunnah to warn against innovation and to warn against muqtadi'een, those people who call to innovation. So it isn't that you, you don't want peace. You want all good for all of your brothers in Islam. But we have to. It's a, it's a duty. It's a duty and part of the usul of Ahl Sunnah, you know, part of the foundation of Ahl Sunnah that the Prophet Sallallahu left us upon, and left his Sahaba upon, is defending the religion against change, against changing the verdicts, and